All right, thanks for watching. And today we would like to do something very neat. Namely, given any linearly independent set, we'll be able to extend it to a basis. Now, if you watch my other videos on the replacement theorem, you know that in theory we can do this. The replacement theorem says, in theory, you can extend any Li set to a basis. But now we want to see how to do it in practice. So here's a neat problem. So let V be the, be the following vector space. So let V be the set of vectors x1, x2, x3, x4 in Rn. And sorry, one more, x5 in R5 such that the following equation holds. x1 minus 2x2 plus 3x3 minus x4 plus 2x5 equals 0. And consider the following linearly independent subset, namely s is 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. And this is it's linearly independent because it only has one non-zero vector and you can check that it's in V. Because why is it in V? Well, zero minus two times one plus three times one minus one plus two times zero. You can check that it's minus two plus three minus one, which is zero. So indeed, that vector is in your set. And the goal is, we would like to find a basis for V which contains S. So goal, extend S to a basis of V. In other words, we would like to find a basis of V that starts with S. That is 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, and a bunch of other vectors. By the way, the fact that S has only one element doesn't matter. You can do it with any finite set, at least. And how do we do this? Well, it need, based on a very neat trick, first of all, let's find a basis for V. So let's find a basis. Beta of V. And to do this, notice V is given by an equation. Let's solve that equation. So let's solve x1 minus 2x2 plus 3x3 minus x4 plus 2x5 equals 0. Technically, you would have to re reduce a matrix, but because it's just a one equation, you can solve for it. So x1, it's 2x2 minus 3x3 plus x4 minus 2x5. And then you can solve for x1. I mean, I can tell you what the vector is. Because then our vector x, which is x1 up to x5, x2, x3, x4, x5, that's simply uh, 2x2 minus 3x3 plus x4 minus 2x5 and then x2, x3, x4, x5. And I wrote it in such a weird way because then we can decompose the vector easily because this then becomes x2 times 2, 1, 0, 0, 0 plus x3 times minus 3, 0, 1, 0, 0, plus x4 times 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and plus x5 times minus 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. And so what's our basis? Our basis beta of v, so careful, it's not the one we want to find because we want to find a basis that starts with s. It's simply all those vectors 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, minus 3, 0, 1, 0, 0, 
one zero zero one zero and minus two zero 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 one. And we've just shown that the spaces spans and it turns out the spaces because it's a null space, it's automatically linearly independent. And I invite you to watch another video of mine where they do precisely that, showing that it's a basis. So you can assume it's a basis, but as I said, it's not our final answer. How now do you find a basis that contains S? It's a really neat trick. The trick is to consider a gigantic matrix, namely the matrix that starts with S and you know it's the matrix that starts with S and ends in theta and in other words the matrix whose first few columns are S and then the rest is theta which is here as 0, 1, 1, 1, 0 so that was S and then 2, 1, 0, 0, 0 and then minus 3, 0, 1, 0, 0 one zero zero one zero and minus two zero 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 one and then what you do you row reduce this matrix until you get something like that so let me see ah da 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 yeah, let me do the row reduction just for the hell of it. So then, um, one thing you can do, you can, for example, uh, switch those two rows, and then we get one zero zero one zero, and then uh, one one zero zero zero, one zero one zero zero, and then zero two minus three one two and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then subtract a bunch of stuff, so times minus 1, times minus 1, and then what you get is the following. I'm doing this because I realize it's a mistake in my notes, so I have to do it by hand. So 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and then 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, and then 0, 0, uh, 1, and then minus 1, 0, and then uh, 0, 2, minus 3, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And then, well, it's kind of, sort of, I mean, it looks kind of like row echelon form, but not quite. One thing you can do is uh, subtract 2 times this row from this row, so times minus 2, and then we get 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and then let's see, so 0, 0, minus 3, and then 2 plus 1, which is 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then notice one thing we can do, we can multiply this by 3 and we get uh, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and lastly uh, we have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and a bunch of zeros. Okay, good. <laughs> so, this is, it, it's in reduced row echelon form, which is a nice coincidence, but really, all we need for this problem is that's in row echelon form. So, what do we get in the end? That if you row reduce this into row echelon form, you get the following matrix, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, 0, uh, 1, minus 1, 0, and then 0, 0, I have a bunch of zeros, 
and dot, 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 dot. Then, basically, here's a cool trick. Figure out where the pivots are. They're in the first, second, and third column. I'm sorry, first, second, third, and fifth column of our matrix, which tells us that our answer lies precisely in the first, second, third, and fifth column of our original matrix. All right, so if you want our answer, so a basis of V that consists of, that's, you know, that starts with S is then the following. It's simply, It's simply the following, uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 0. I realized my notes were correct, actually, but uh, it's okay. At least I showed you how to do it. And then minus 3, 0, 1, 0, 0, and minus 2, 0, 0, 0, 1. And notice, indeed, it starts with S. And let me explain you why it's a basis for V. Because, so, well, we know that S is in V. And then also, this is a basis for V. So really, the column space of this matrix is just the span of all those vectors, which is precisely V, because we know that beta generates V. So kind of adding S is redundant. So the column space of A is V, and in another video I showed that to find a basis of column space is just enough to figure out the pivot columns of the row echelon, of A row echelon form of your matrix, and then just go back to the original matrix which gives you a basis for the column space, but we said the column space was all of V, so in the end, this whole thing will give you a basis of V. So the fact that it gives a basis, it's not too hard. What is slightly trickier is that it actually gives a basis starting with S. It's because, you see, row reduction preserves linear independence. So if, for example, this first column is not a pivot column, by definition of reduced row echelon form, it would mean that the first column would be a column of zeros. So even, I think, in a row echelon form, and that would mean, because the zero vector is linearly dependent, it would also mean that at least the first vector of S is linearly dependent, but we know S is linearly independent, so that doesn't work. Also, suppose S is bigger and has two vectors, and suppose the second column is not a pivot column. Well, that would mean the second column, in this case, would be a multiple of this column. But then, going back to the original matrix, it would mean this second column of S would be a multiple of the first one. And that would also contradict the fact that S is linearly independent. And continu continuing this way, you'll see that if you row reduce, all the columns of S must be linearly independent, which means going back again to our original matrix is that the basis we choose must start with S because S is linearly independent. And then the rest of the vectors, they don't really matter, but at the end, we do get a basis for a whole vector space. All right, I hope you like this little extension lemma. Uh, I hope it extended your day in happiness. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.